Hello everybody, finally a new video from Bicotic. Coming up I chat to myself about the new Pinarello Dogma F. We wonder why we can't find any pictures of the rim brake version. We compare it to the old one. We have a look at the new Liv Langmer and compare it to the old version. We look at the various different models. We then wonder why there aren't any trail bikes for sale. I'm going to give my honest opinion on how I've got on with Jubilitos and with S-Works turbo cotton tyres. Okay, so the Pinarello Dogma F, and I'm just at the website here loading it up. And if I'm totally honest, it's a pretty annoying website. Every time I come to it, it takes this long to load it up. It's very fancy dancy, but really, I just want to have a look at the bikes. Ah, the art of balance. Now, the reason I'm showing the website is I'm a little bit frustrated at the moment how cheesy stuff is getting. Like I say, I just want to see the bike, but what I have to go through is reams of completely superfluous marketing. I mean, it's all very well and everything, but where are the bikes? <laughs> ah, finally, we find some bikes down at the bottom. You cannot defeat the forces of physics. So instead, we have worked to control them. Really? And exploit that strength. Ooh. The result is more than a bicycle. Transforming the wind from your enemy to your greatest ally. I mean, really? Why does it have to be so cheesy? I mean, the pictures are all pretty cool. Can we just have this annoying bloke talking complete rubbish not there? It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it can move us forward in extraordinary ways. It's like they copied it straight from the Audi advert. A delicate interplay. I mean, is it just me or is that the worst or 3D you've ever seen? Detail makes a difference. Anyway, when you cut through all the BS, this is what we end up with. The Pinarello Dogma F. Now you've got to wonder about them changing it to F because now the red ETAP access version is basically the Dogma Fred. It also means when you search for this bike on Google, you tend to get the old Dogma F12. Google finds it a bit confusing that it's now just the F. Anyway, pretty good looking bike, you'd have to say. I like the paint scheme. I think it looks good. Now, if you read through the website and you boil down all the silly wording that they use, it's basically lighter, stiffer, and more aero, as you'd expect. Looking at it, probably the one thing that I'm not massively keen on, and I go on about this quite a lot in other videos, is this little bit here that sticks out. That just looks weird to me. And if we look at a more extreme example, this is the Cube Lightning, which I think looks very weird around here. But if you actually look at the rest of the bike, it actually looks quite nice. Now, if you actually take this bit here and this overhang and you fill it in, whew, how much better does that look? That would definitely be on my radar, that bike. That bike, nope. That bike, yes. So I'd rather see that not like that. So this is the disc brake version. And on the website, it definitely talks about a rim brake version. But if you try and click on it, the only one you're going to see is the Dogma Fred disc brake version. And you can't click on the rim brake one. Now the only picture I could find of it was this one, which I believe is Garent Thomas's race bike. Because obviously Ineos used the rim brake version in the Tour de France. And if we fade between the two, we can see that it's quite a different size to the photo of the disc one, so it's hard to compare them. Thomas's bike is obviously a larger size. And why can't we see the rim brake version? Well, maybe it's because SRAM don't make an ETAP access rim brake version of this group set, and presumably Pinarello are waiting for the new Dura Ace to be released by Shimano. So we'll have to wait until that comes out before we get to see the rim brake version. That's my guess. So let's compare the Dogma F disc to the old Dogma F12. And if we fade between the two, we get something like this. It does look a bit neater around the front here. There's big gaps there on the F12. All looks a bit neater on the F. Now the forks are completely different apparently. But shape wise they look quite similar. What does appear to be quite different is the down tube. We've got it sort of slightly different shape down the bottom there. Coming out of the bottom bracket at a slightly different angle. So that's quite different. And then if we look at the seat post area, this has all been slimmed down a bit and clearly the rear seat stays are quite different here. Different angle, slightly lower. 
different shape. I wonder if they have modelled that slightly on the Bolide, which is their TT bike. Some slightly similar shapes going on there maybe. And then again if we compare Grant Thomas's 2021 bike to an F12 rim brake version, again it's quite difficult to see, but it's basically a similar deal. What it does look like is that this little overhang at the front here is a bit smaller on the new one, which I like, because I never liked that bit. But it's basically the same changes. So if we compare it to the specialised Tarmac SL7, which is one of its main competitors, this is what we get here. The SL7 seems much higher at the front, doesn't it? And the thread is a lot more curvy. So I guess that comes down to personal preference. Comment down below which you prefer. More straightforward tarmac shapes. Or the Dogma thread with its curvy Italian styling. Comment down below. So presumably Pinarello were pretty disappointed that they didn't win the Tour de France this year with their new bike. But still flying the Italian flag. Here's the bike that won, well won 80% of the Tour de France, and that's Tade Pogacar's Colnago V3 RS disc brake bike. And I say that it won 80% of the Tour de France because he rode it on 17 stages out of 21, but for two of the stages, 17 and 18, which were in the big mountains, he swapped back to a bike very similar to his 2020 winning rim brake version of the V3 RS. But I couldn't find a picture of the new one. So there we go. Does that count as a Tour de France being won by a disc brake bike? You decide. Interestingly, if we look back through the last 10 editions of the Tour de France, we can see that nine times out of those 10, it's been won on an Italian bike. Colnago, Pinarello, 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 only being slightly upset by Vincenzo winning for Astana on his specialised tarmac. However, he is Italian. Next up, I thought I'd chat to myself about the Liv Langma for 2022. I was at the Otley races a few weeks ago and the women's race had I think about 120 riders in it and it was a cracking race. So if you are a woman that races or you're looking to get into racing, the Langma from giant sister company Liv, I suspect will be well and truly on your radar. And this is it, the 2022 version, and this is the Langma Advanced Pro 1 disc, and it's a pretty good looking bike, I think. This one here with Shimano Ultegra will be on sale for £3,999, and for that money you will get a power meter, so that's pretty good news. Now, again, remarkably, if you boil down the hype on the website, we've got featherweight efficiency, intuitive handling, aero advantage, so lighter, stiffer, faster. As ever, let's compare it to the last version, and here it is. The 2021 version of the Liv Langma Advanced Pro 1 disc. And it's quite a big shake-up, isn't it? If we zoom in around the front, we can see here that it's slimmed down a bit and is looking a bit tidier. So we like that. All pretty similar down here. And then we've also got some pretty big changes around here. This for me was pretty ugly part of the old bike here. I was never that keen on this shape here that we had for the seat post clamp. And it's been tidied up quite a lot on the new version. So that's got to be a good thing. Interestingly, the seat stays have actually gone up a bit. Now, personally, I've never been a big fan of these rubber covers that get put on top of the seat clamp bolt. After a while they tend to sort of peel up and not go back in place properly. And I was actually at the Ribble showroom in Clitheroe a few weeks ago. And they had on display this pretty bling blue road race bike. Which I liked a lot. Other than it had this awful plastic cover at the join between the seat post and the frame. And that is diabolical that one. That would seriously put me off. One of my favourite bikes at the showroom was this one here. I guess it's kind of a towny single speed fun bike. 
which I thought, yeah, I'd love one of those, wicked. And then of course it occurred to me, anything that I'd ever want to use this bike for, I would need to leave it outside. So outside the coffee shop or outside the supermarket or outside the office, whatever. And seeing as I don't fancy carrying around 20 kilos of chains and padlocks, it would be about five minutes before this cheese ball here rocked up and decided that he was going to help himself. So sadly, I wouldn't be able to find a use for this bike and therefore I'm out. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the job in hand. Let's compare the Langma to the TCR. And here we have the TCR Advance Pro 1 disc. And if we fade between the two, you can definitely see they have very similar DNA. In fact, I would go as far as to say the Langma and the TCR come off the same drawing board. I couldn't be 100% sure, but those forks look almost identical. And the bikes are very, very similar, aren't they? Let's have a look at this bit here. And again, very similar. Maybe a little bit sharper on the, the Langma here. What I'm also digging about this new Langma is the paint jobs. I think that looks pretty tasty. There's also this colour here. I think that looks great. I like that a lot. Liv have also released some other versions of the Langma. Here we've got the Langma Advanced Pro Zero Access. Obviously with the SRAM Force ETAP group set. Apparently it does have a power meter. Not the SRAM one, but actually the giant Halo Power Pro. So I'm not sure how that works. I'd have to look that up. And this is coming in at £5,599. We also have the Advanced One Plus, 3,149, and I think it's basically the Advanced One, except with the SLR236 wheel system. And here is the Advanced One, which you can see has got the PR2 wheel set, but coming in cheaper at 2599. Both of those bikes have got the Ultegra Mechanical. Then last but not least, it's the Advanced Two, and that's got the 105 group set on it. And there's actually no power meters on those three versions. And then apparently coming at the end of August, we've got two more versions, one of which I think is going to be the SL version. So that will be the top of the range. And I think we are waiting on the new Dura race again. So I look forward to seeing that. Now then, I've been doing a bit of mountain biking again just lately. I thought my mountain biking days were over when I sold my full suspension bike about three years ago. But I was in Wales at Cody Brennan with a bunch of guys the other day and we had a right laugh. Most of us actually hired a bike from the trail center there, and this is the bike that we hired. It's the Trek Fuel EX8. I was riding a medium, so it had 29 inch wheels, but if you get the smaller sizes, I believe it goes down to the 27.5 wheels. Something that has changed since I was riding mountain bikes is that most bikes now have what they're calling the boost standard, which is slightly wider axles. Worth bearing in mind if you're looking for new wheels for your old mountain bike because you don't want to get the wrong size. Anyway, after that little trip to the trail center, I thought, ooh, I might get back into mountain biking. I enjoyed that. And I thought this was actually a really good bike. So here we are, looked it up, but it's pretty much a grand outside of my budget. I only want to spend about 2K. Even if I could afford it, you have to be a bit of an outlier size. So extra small, extra large, or XXL. So I thought, right, let's have a look at the Canyon website. The last bike I owned was a Spectral. And I don't know whether you've been looking for a bike lately, but what is going on? I literally couldn't find anything on the Canyon website that I could actually buy. It's either coming soon, it's a woman's version, or it's out of stock. I don't understand how Canyon are making any money at the moment. Likewise Specialize, the Stump Jumper, all out of stock. Comp version, all out of stock. I like that colour. Nice. I've always fancied a YT Industries bike. They've got the ISO, ISO trail version. Nice looking bike. Probably outside my budget, to be fair. Uh, but if you want to buy this, well, we're not even shipping till next year. That sucks. What have we got here? The Merida. Not my favourite looking bike, but if you could get one, maybe I would. But on the Merida website, you basically have to contact your local shop. So I have to go to each of their websites and either they show their stock online or I'm going to have to ring them up. That makes it crazy difficult to actually buy one of these. What about this? The Radon or Radon Skeen looks pretty good. Competitive price, like that. Uh, the product can't be sent to your selected delivery country. Okay. Presumably that's a Brexit thing, is it? Okay. Which then led me over to the Giant website and the Trance. And at least on the Giant website, if you select your size, it gives you some shops that presumably have this bike in stock. 
I haven't contacted them yet, but at least maybe I can actually buy one. So wow, it's really difficult to buy trail bikes or even bikes at the moment. It's really annoying. Right, next up, Tubalitos. No oh, wait, hang on, that's my shopping. Here we go, Tubalitos. So who's given them a go? I was very excited when I saw these released a few months ago. Super light, super small, super strong. And I thought definitely, yeah, I'm gonna give those a go. Super expensive at 30 quid each, but you know, one up front, one up back, one as a spare, and you're saving nearly 150 grams in weight over your heavy butyl inner tubes. So I thought, yep, I'm gonna give this a go. So for the road, you can get the Tubo, very lightweight at 38 grams, or you can get the S Tubo, at a crazy light, 23 grams. And when I bought these, I didn't really realize, but they're actually using the S here to indicate that this is probably just for use as a spare because it's so small and light. So what I did was I bought three, I bought the Tubo, and then I bought two S Tubos, not realizing that it was probably just for a spare. And I put the normal one in the front wheel because getting a blowout in the front wheel kind of freaks me out. And I put the S Tubo in the rear, and then I had an S Tubo in my toolkit as a spare. Everything went well, easy to fit, super light. I couldn't have been any happier, other than the fact they're pretty expensive. First ride, 20 miles in, I got a slow puncher in my rear tire, so the S Tubo in a tube, and I had to change that, and it was a group ride. And when I pulled out the orange inner tube from my tire, there was a roar of laughter from the group and jokes like sausage skins, modeling balloons, Sainsbury's carrier bag, and it was pretty embarrassing. So that didn't go very well. To Tubalito's credit, I did contact them and told them what happened, and no questions asked, they sent me a new one. So that was absolutely fine. But over the next couple of weeks, all three of the Tubalitos that I had bought all got slow punctures, and I couldn't find anything in the tires when I took them off. And the only way I could find where the air was coming out of them is if I put them under water, and it was an incredibly slow puncture on each of the end tubes almost making me think that it wasn't something coming through the tire, it was almost like some kind of defect in the material. So that's my experience with Tubalito. I'm not gonna buy any more. They were too unreliable for me. And in fact, one of them went while I was out the house and the bike was up on the stand. I came back in and found that I had a slow puncture. Very weird. I've now bought a couple of latex inner tubes. Never tried those before. So I'll let you know how I get on with them. Okay, so just winding up this video now because I've been talking to myself for hours. The S-Works Turbo Cotton. I've been using these now for a couple of months after I got a puncture in a GP5000 TL tire. It wouldn't seal itself. I couldn't stick a rubber plug in. That wouldn't work. It was cold and wet. I got covered in sealant. Getting the tire off was a real pain. Put a tube in. Couldn't get the tire back on. Had to use tire levers in the end. Pinch the tube. Couldn't blow it up. And in the end, it wasn't too terrible because it was only about three miles to get home, but I still had to clip-clop home in my road shoes in the wet, and I was pretty unhappy. So I was immediately on to the internet, and I bought a couple of these S-Works Turbo Cotton tires. Installing them was a dream. They just plop straight onto the wheel, and they feel great. I absolutely love them. As I just mentioned, I had a few punctures with the Tubalitos, but changing these at the side of the road was an absolute breeze. Uh, but the only downside to these tyres is that, well, they're quite expensive. And two months in, I'm down to the wear markers on the rear. So I've got to start looking at buying some new tyres. Apart from that, if you want some fast tyres that are easy to fit and feel lovely, I can highly recommend these. They just wear really quickly. So that's it from this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And hopefully it won't be six months before I make another video.